According to an article in the Harvard Business Review, every organization has an emotional culture, even if the culture is one of suppressing emotions. By not only allowing emotions into the workplace, but also understanding and consciously shaping them, leaders can better motivate their employees. To dive more deeply into this topic, I reached out to a colleague of mine, Joy Stickle. Joy is an accomplished and highly motivated global human resource leader with a deep passion for work in the talent and culture space. Her HR career spans over 25 years and extends across a range of industries, including hospitality, high tech, life sciences, and pharma. And she's currently the executive director of talent management and development for Sumitomo Pharma. To her core, Joy is a transformational coach and change agent with a record of success developing strategies that support both individuals and organizations to transition through times of significant change. And she's driven to elevate and transform workplace experience that inspire purpose, connection, and impact. I couldn't have asked for a better woman to join me in this conversation. If you are new to the Women Taking the Lead podcast, hello and welcome. I'm Jody Flynn. I'm an executive leadership coach, speaker, and author. I'm the current president of the board for the Maine Women's Conference, and I have the privilege and joy to work with women leaders to hone the skills and the mindset that allow them to grow into and then thrive in senior leadership. My specialization is working with women who are still stabilizing after their last promotion and those who want to be ready for the next one. It is my belief that for more women to hold positions of senior leadership, there are changes at the individual and organizational level that need to occur. Not only do women need to be trained and coached on how to operate at these levels of leadership, organizations need to change their paradigm of how the work gets done and what supports are in place for leaders to do their job. If we are not already connected on LinkedIn, please send me an invitation to connect. You can find me directly at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Jody Flynn, or you can search for Jody Flynn on the platform. I'm very active on LinkedIn, so I should be at or near the top of the search results. You'll see that the follow button is prominent on my profile, but if you click on the more button to the right, you'll find the option to connect. Click on that and be sure to add a note to the invitation letting me know you're a listener of the podcast. I would love to connect with you and get to know you better. Welcome to the Women Taking the Lead podcast, Joy. Thanks, Jody. So great to be here with you. I'm excited that you're here. So for for everyone listening, I just want to give you some context. So Joy and I met years ago, um, and we've continued to stay in touch. We've collaborated on different projects, and Joy is part of a quarterly talent development leadership roundtable that I do just to give an opportunity for leaders in the talent development space to come together, meet each other, build relationships, and talk about common challenges and wins that they're experiencing. So Joy recently talked about the emotional change curve, and I had not heard about it, although it Joy's going to give an overview in a second. It has its history in a topic that I'm very familiar with, and I loved it so much. I had to bring Joy on to talk to you and give you some information on the emotional change curve and how you can utilize this information in the workplace. So Joy, please give us an overview of what the emotional change curve is, where it came from, um, just so everyone has a sense of what it is that we're talking about. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jody. So for those of you who are not familiar with the emotional change curve, it's a model that details um, how people feel when they're experiencing change. But it has a really interesting history, and I've been familiar with it for years Um, I grew up with 
a mom who was a social worker, dad who was a minister, sisters who are social workers. So the idea about grief and loss has been something that I've always, you know, been learning about. The model was developed by Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, um, who's best, best known for authoring On Death and Dying, which was published in the 1950s. And in this body of work, she introduces the five stages of grief. So there's some real similarities when you look at the emotional change curve. The stages that are used in the, the change curve are shock, denial, anger, exploring, and then finally acceptance. And the curve just really demonstrates that when you're in denial and anger, um, it affects your productivity and your self-esteem. And so being an HR professional for my entire career, you know, I've seen this time and time again, that when we really get stuck or we drop into these elements of the curve, um, it really prevents us from being our best self. And I have just found this work to be so true, um, but also so helpful to really share with others so that when they're experiencing change, you know, they understand um, that it's really irrational, right? It's really based on emotions. So um, looking forward to seeing how we can apply this and, you know, the conversation today and, and helping, helping leaders. Yeah. And Joy, as I share with you, being a psychology major in college, of course, I'm very familiar with the work of Elizabeth Kubler-Ross and the stages of death and dying. And it stuck with me, right? Because it's so relevant and mm -hmm. it's so applicable. I mean, there are some psychological concepts that are more complex and more nebulous and, you know, mm -hmm. how to apply them. But this is very real and very day to day because we're constantly going through change. And I remember when the pandemic hit and all the articles that were being written about it and what we were all experiencing. And I remember listening to Brene Brown's uh, mm -hmm. podcast at the time and she was interviewing somebody and all of a sudden there was like the epiphany, the insight, like, oh my God, what we've been experiencing is grief. Mm -hmm. We have experienced a loss of our normal way of life and our connection to one another. What we are going through is grief. And like, but what I've also seen in my work is that any type of loss is grief. Anything we label bittersweet. We call it bittersweet because there is some loss attached mm -hmm. to it, right? When we're saying, you know, goodbye to people because we're moving on to something really great. We, we do experience grief while we do at the same time that we experience all of the, you know, amazing and what we would consider good emotions. Additionally, in the work with I do, I do with my clients, I, we talk often about examining the experiences that we have that keep us from being our best self. So we talk a lot about like mm -hmm. our triggers in terms, you know, the things that cause us stress or diminish who we are and that, that, um, shock and denial and anger are mm -hmm. the, what I would in, in my coaching process, we call the lower levels of energy. They are mm -hmm. normal right? They are part of the human experience, you know, and you can't just push them away. You can't just be like, I'm not in denial. I'm not angry, right? You, you are and you are, right? <laughs> That's okay. But bringing awareness to it, being able to name it as mm -hmm. we're having that experience gives us some facility to move through it. And that's why I thought it would be so powerful for you to talk with those who listen to this podcast about the emotional change curve, because if they are empowered to name it and be aware of it, they'll have more facility to move through it. So my next question for you, Joy, is, and because, you know, you are steeped in the, the work environment and what people are going through. You, you shared right before we started recording that you just came from a workshop on change, you know? That's so, right. so definitely is something like we're trying to talk about more in the workplace. 
what do you, how do you see this playing out in the workplace? What are some of the things that might trigger us to, to start that cycle of the emotional change curve? What has been so present for me throughout my career in supporting leaders is how difficult it is when the change happens to you. And often this means it's an unexpected change. It's not a change that you sought out. It wasn't your idea. Perhaps you didn't have a seat at the table when decisions were being made. You know, and this might look like simply a new project is assigned to you instead of you raising your hand and opting into that project. It might be that your role is changing. Again, you may have been interested in an expanded role or a promotion, but when somebody decides for you what your new role will look like, it's difficult, right? This is a change that's unexpected and happened to you. Um, I know I've been through many restructures and organizations, and I've seen how difficult it is for leaders when they are told you need to reduce headcount, you need to reduce budget, and they don't have the opportunity to be part of the decision. So that, again, that change is happening to them. Uh, you know, COVID, lots of examples, right? Um, unexpected. You are told where you'll be working, right? For many people, that meant working from home. And we weren't ready for that. That was a change that happened to us. So that's, I think, a real theme I see mm -hmm. over and over again, where we see people going through those stages of change because the shock hits you, right? And you immediately just go into denial and often anger before you can really reframe it and see the opportunity. So what I'm hearing you say is, you know, change is hard, right? And you're going to go through this anyway, but if it occurs unexpectedly in a way, especially like if it's unexpected, then you didn't have control over it. So if there's also there's change plus a feeling of a loss of control over that mm -hmm. change, it's going to exacerbate these feelings is what I'm hearing. Is that correct? I absolutely have experienced that personally and have seen many leaders. You know, this is where I think people typically get stuck. Um, we're people, mm -hmm. right? And we're just juggling multiple changes all at the same time. So the less in control we feel, you know, the easier it is for us just to, you know, go into those places of low energy, like you said, yeah. and the productivity and the self-esteem really dips and then the stress incurs and we've got this downward spiral, right? That we often just can't get ahead of. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm thinking of the, an extreme example, but I think most of us may have been through this for one reason or another. There's a difference between choosing to leave a job right? And you go through, you have your job and you, you know, there's a runway and a safe landing. You keep your job while you're looking for the next job. And then you say goodbye. That change is hard to go through, but then compared to you find out you're getting laid off right. or your position has been outsourced and you are no mm -hmm. longer needed. And now you may not have even loved your job. Mm -hmm. And it's still a blow, right? It's a blow to self-esteem, to that feeling of control of, of, you know, like whether or not you, you gave it all or you provided a lot for the company, there's that feeling of like, I'm not valued. And now I have to look for a job and I'd have no income coming in right now, other than maybe a little bit from unemployment, which we all know if you've, if you've ever applied or, or taken unemployment, like it is peanuts, compared to what you're, you were normally making. So that's stressful. So th I would think that, you know, that for me, that jumps out as a, a clear example of, you know, the dramatic um, difference between having control and not having control. But I was even sharing with you, one of the things I talk about with my clients is there can be a loss of control, even in situations where you primarily were in control. So for example, you wanted a promotion, Mm -hmm. And you work towards it and you got it, right? And 
that might have been hard, right? The transition. But then it gets even harder if there are unexpected challenges on the other side. And actually, I had a client who it was a new job, like she got a new job, it was a new role, it was all sunshine and rainbows. And she had like asked all the right questions and felt really good. It was going to be challenging, but she was like ready for it and prepared to put in the extra time and effort and started her new job only to find out there were challenges that she wasn't told about. Right. Mm -hmm. And additional things she was going to have to do. And she was not in a good place. And that's a perfect example of how often people really jump around the change curve. You don't always start with shock, right? In Mm -hmm. that example, they probably started with exploration or maybe even acceptance. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes then you get pulled back the other direction um, and you just toggle back and forth often until you land in a spot. So Mm -hmm. it's so interesting to really think and plot it out because we're, we're people, Everybody progresses through in different places, in different timelines, in different ways. They start in different areas. So Mm -hmm. um, good example, though. Yeah, you had said this is not a linear process. So that That's that right. you know where you where how you explain that where you can be in exploration and acceptance to start, mm-hmm. right? You know, maybe you had some internal things going on, but it wasn't that deep, right? It wasn't intense. It was just kind of like, hmm, there might be some other opportunities out there for me. Let me look into it. Okay, I've decided I am seriously going to interview, apply and interview for other positions. Now I've got this job. Now I'm in the new job. Holy smokes. I don't like this, <laughs> right? This isn't what I signed up for, you know, and now I'm a little angry, right? About what, what happened. And you, you also pointed to, there's all sorts of changes that are going on around us, right? There might be a new product launch in our company, or, you know, we we're going through a merger or an acquisition while at the same time you're getting promoted or you're being transferred to a different team. Yada, like all of that can happen. One thing I want to talk about too, and, mm-hmm. and openly acknowledge is we have a life outside of work as well. That's right. Do you have a challenge to share? There is so much that can be gained by listening to what another woman is going through and to understanding the strategy she will implement to overcome the challenge she is faced with. For this reason, I would love to do more on-air coaching calls on this podcast. If you're a woman leader who's been promoted or taken on a new role in the last year, I invite you to apply to be on the Women Taking the Lead podcast. You will be completely anonymous, so you won't need to worry about anyone you work with listening to you talk about your challenges. This is an opportunity for you to get insights and strategies to overcome any challenges you've been faced with at work. And the other women listening to your episode will learn from your experience and gain insights they can use at work, just like this episode. You can find the link that will take you to the application in the episode description in your podcast app or at the bottom of the episode page on the Women Taking the Lead website. I'm looking forward to seeing your application. So Joy, share with, you know, give some examples about how like this, this can be in a dual world. And I know you've had some examples of like this, both and. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. I know you and I were chatting, I think the last time about Maine, right? And one common connection now we have is Maine. And my youngest was going off to college, um, going to college in Maine, and really excited about that. And at the same time, you know, mom is, you know, a little, a little nervous, a little terrified, little little sense of loss there for sure as we think about the change curve and uh you know what we're going through and then what our children are going through and then you know so you just take personal changes similar to that and you layer it on to what's happening in the workplace 
And I'm with an organization now that's going through significant change, as many are, as we introduce a new work model, as we think about product portfolios. So there's many, many ways to think about the emotions that we feel each day. And it's not always about just the one change that's in front of us. It's just a jumbled mess, right? Yes. And <laughs> that's okay. I was just but thinking it's, like it's you and pretty. I could play a game show where we bring people on and you and I identify five to 10 different things, like change that's immediately going on in their life right now. Like, so it would be so easy to identify. We could probably ask three questions and be like, so you got this, you got this and this and this. So one thing I want to underscore is like, well, yes, change brings about emotions, right? This is, this is part of the human experience. We're all going through it, right? And it's very normal. It is very normal to have a lot of change going on. There's this, I don't know if it's like an idealism or this myth that at some point our life will settle down and <laughs> we'll be able to just rot coast for a little while and like just ride it. I have yet to experience that in my life, Joy. You're shaking your head so you can't see Joy, but she's just like, no. <laughs> Who told you that? <laughs> yeah, this, this does not happen, but perhaps we can get some facility around, like, like this could be fun. Like if, like I'm thinking of like, if you do skiing, right, you know, to, you know, you're always moving and you're always shifting, but that can be kind of fun, exciting there's a little bit of an adventure. So like, so let's kind of, I'm thinking joy now let's transition into like, how can we change our perspective on change? Because change is going to happen. It's going to come at us and how can we be ready or how can we gain some facility around this change? What would you recommend? Yeah. Well, a personal example is probably the most helpful. I, I think, um, in a role I had where I was the global head of talent management, uh, as I mentioned, we were going through some significant right-sizing, restructuring, and a lot of changes happened to me. Um, I had my budget cut in half. I was asked to reduce my team. Um, I honestly wasn't sure if I was really going to have a role in the new organization. Um, so not only was that change unexpected, um, but I quickly began to feel that my value was mm -hmm. diminished. And I think that's an important piece we haven't talked about today. Again, it relates to the self-esteem axis when you think about the emotional change curve is, um, you know, the value that we perceive or that we're being told that we provide in a role, again, personal or professional becomes really important for us in terms of how we're perceiving that change. So enjoy um, do I want to like, excuse me for interrupting here, yeah. but I want to kind of bring that back to like, I'm because what I'm hearing is like loss of control. Like in that scenario, if you had been brought into a meeting saying, okay, here's what we're dealing with. Here is the challenge. One thing we're going to need to do is look at our budgets. It would have been a different experience for you if you had like raised your hand and said, I will half my budget. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you would have felt valued mm -hmm. because you were in on the conversation and had some um, like locus of control Mm -hmm. around what the end would be. Okay. Sorry. I just, I yeah, like, no, I mean, that's the age old that we tell everybody in leadership training, right? Let employees be part of the change. Now, sometimes that's, that's easy and we just bypass it. Sometimes it's, it's not possible. Right. But I do think we have to keep as employees and leaders, both, you know, trying to, find opportunities to be part of that change by understanding the business, right? Understanding and proactively thinking about, you know, what's happening in the business? How can I be more agile? How can I flex? How can I get in front of any changes, right? So the changes don't happen to me. And we, we tell this to business leaders as well, right? Yeah. CEOs of organizations, how do you get out in front of the change? Otherwise, yeah. the change will happen to you. But this was definitely an example where the change 
um, really happened to me. And I immediately, uh, I think, went into, you know, denial, but really anger, right? How can I do my job with mm. less budget, with less resources? And then really kind of started to question the value of my function. Mm. Um, so what I really had to do was reframe it. And I think that really is the technique that we have to continue to remind ourselves of and coach others on is how can I redefine my role? How can I find value? Maybe it looks different. Maybe it won't be providing learning and development programs. Maybe it will look more like organizational development and change and transformational support for the organization, right? So I had to kind of quickly redefine, raise my hand and say, I think I can offer this. And I think, you know, this is why OD support or change and transformation work will be so valuable to an organization that's restructuring. So I think this is where I was able to regain control, right? Mm. And really say, here's what I can do. Here's my value. And then automatically your self-esteem lifts, right? And you kind of move out of Mm -hmm. that anger and you get into exploration a little bit more. But it's that focus and it's that ability to be able to pull yourself through the anger and get to the other side of the coin. (laughs) You know, I have to think about changes. It's a two-sided coin. You know, it's there's opportunity. There's always opportunity there, but there's often stress and anxiety and ambiguity and all of those emotions that get in our way too. Well, it sounds like reframing starts to create that like life raft in the middle of the ocean, right? If we think of the ocean as like the uncertainty right, right. and all of that, well, how do you start, you know, building a, a vehicle, you know, or a raft on which, you know, you can gain back some, you know, some little piece where, mm-hmm. where you have control. And what I heard you say is that the way to create that like life raft is to reframe how you're looking at the change, you know, and seeing like immediately, however small, how can you contribute? How can you get control back over this situation? Where can you contribute? And that moves you through the denial and the anger. Well, Mm -hmm. at least at that point, you're past the denial. Like I'm Mm -hmm. dealing with this. This is happening. It's it's helping you, right? Yeah. I find one of the, but like, actually I'll I'll add this if it's helpful. I find, you know, because dealing with denial, you know, is something that like I have to work on with myself and I help my clients work through. I find even saying just like, this is happening or that just happened helps me ground myself, mm-hmm. get present and real like, and like get past the denial, right? Denial is like the resistance, like, no, 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 no. Why, why, why? That's denial. But if, but if we get to that place of like, this is happening. Okay. Now we're past denial. And then how can I contribute? Like, what can I do here? I hear you saying helps you get past that anger stage. Mm. I love it. Yeah, I think so. I think the quicker that you can reframe and you can find the opportunity. And I think that often looks like you're right. Just finding the smallest piece, right. That gives you focus. And sometimes it's simply just doing your job, right. You know, we often get way ahead of ourselves Mm. and we have to remember that, you know, there is a job to be done and somebody is expecting us to do it and to just be there in the moment and to stay focused and to stay present sometimes is enough. You know, I always recommend that people try to start planning for the change. And I think that's a way to start to feel in control is when you put pen to paper, if you will, and kind of get through that planning process too. So, um, you know, different points in time, different strategies work. Yes. I, you know, and I've heard people say like one day at a time and sometimes Mm -hmm. one hour at a time, if that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. Awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the emotional change curve or anything else you think would benefit our audience to know? I think there's a whole other podcast on how do we build resilience, but I think if we were to back it up a little bit, right, we know change is always coming. Like we said that, right? Mm -hmm. We have to acknowledge that, that there is no steady state any longer. So when we acknowledge that change will always be coming our way, I I think there's a lot of work 
And there's a lot of resources that we can all do in, in anticipation of just building resilience. Mm. Um, I did some work with Corn Ferry earlier in my career, and they they introduced um, the four characteristics that were critical to building resilience. And these have stuck with me. So I'll share yeah, them. Yeah. And I'm happy to share more of the work. The first one is positivity, which, you know, for some comes naturally for others. It's, you know, it's about gratitude, right? It's about finding that opportunity, reframing it. The second is, is being empathetic. Um, And again, for some that comes naturally, for some, it's an EQ that we have to build as we really think about, you know, how is this change impacting others? Mm. Um, The third is focused and the fourth is flexible. And I think those are the two, at least for myself, where I really find value in, again, the plan, staying present, Mm. setting goals. Sometimes they're just small goals. Sometimes they're long-term goals. Um, Flexibility. This is about being comfortable with discomfort, right? Of trying something new. Um, and that's a practice, I think, that many of us have, again, just have had happen to us. So how do we strengthen that muscle? How do we strengthen our ability to have a growth mindset, to be learning, to trying new things? And again, I think we can do these things in our personal lives and our professional lives, too. But I think that's a good closing topic is just how do we get in front of all of this, right? But again, it's probably a whole other podcast, a whole other body of work, but yes, I like, but, I like the connection. Yes, no, and absolutely. I think that there is an opportunity here for more because when you were talking about getting fr- in front of the change, that's where my mind is just like goes in like a million different directions. Like, how do we get in front of the change? How do we prepare for this? But there mm-hmm. are things we can do that can lay mm-hmm. the groundwork and help us to stay mm-hmm. aware of what's going on around us and what's mm-hmm. coming up and what the potential is for change. And also mm-hmm. just that readiness factor. Mm-hmm. Like, even if we don't see it coming, are, do we have the skills and the abilities to be able to manage that change when it comes at us? Right. And then our well-being. And I think that's where, you know, the well-being fits into, right? When we manage our stress, when we're living healthy lives, again, so much easier for us to be resilient. Um, or at least gives us that potential to have the strength to be resilient, to face the change, um, and to control our emotions, right? Not to not to go off <laughs> go off the rail, <laughs> right? And there, and I will say that you know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, there's nothing wrong with going off the rails. However, <laughs> you know, you are losing, you know, that time yes. and that energy. Yes. Because going off the rails does take energy, right? You, that's an energy expenditure, right? You're exactly. usually exhausted after you've gone off the rails, you know, and you can do that if you need to do that, but there, there is a cost to it, you know? So, you know, I find more often than not, if you give people the, ch- the choice between going off the rails and not going off the rails, <laughs> they're usually like, I'd rather not go off the rails, you know? Yeah, you're and, right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, time is so important for us, right? That we want to feel confident and energized. And I I know that's so much of the work that you do to help leaders get to that space. So um, hopefully this has been helpful to uh, share some ideas and some best practices and some thoughts just as we really help each other get through these times of change. Yeah. Amazingly helpful, Joy. Amazingly. It was, it was so great to have you on. And so for those um, that want to be able to connect with you and reach out to you, like how, what's the best place for them to find you? Well, I'm certainly on LinkedIn. So that's probably the best and most um, well-known place. So you can find me, Joy Stickel. Um, I work for Sumitomo Pharma and happy to engage and start conversations there. I think that's probably the best place. Yep. And I will include uh, the link to your LinkedIn uh, profile in the description of the episode and the show notes page. So um, please reach out to Joy. She's amazing, you know, and a lovely, lovely human being. And Joy, thank you again for coming on the podcast. Thank you, Jody. Jody. 
what were your takeaways from my conversation with Joy? Could you see any experiences you're having at work in the emotional change curve? Head over to LinkedIn to share your thoughts and takeaways on the post corresponding to this episode. I would love to hear what stood out most for you. And if your last promotion has you experiencing and confronting challenges you haven't faced before, consider working with me. I would love to support you through this transition, help you get your bearings and feeling confident in your leadership once again. You can find a link to schedule a time to chat with me in the episode description. If you're listening through a mobile device, that link will be in your podcast app. If you are listening through the Women Taking the Lead website, the link will be toward the bottom of the episode webpage. If you are going to ask your company to sponsor you to work with a coach, there's also a link to access a checklist that will help you prepare for that conversation. As always, I hope this was of value to you and here's to your success.